Hello and welcome. Today I'm comparing four different EDC lights. These are all very small, pocketable flashlights. The first one here is the Thrunite T1S. The next one is from Olight. This is the Baton 3. Next up we have the Phoenix. This is the E18R. And finally we have the Thrunite T1. This one just happens to be in green. Now first off, of course, I want to talk about the price. On the left, the Thrunite T1S sells for $39.95. The Olight Baton 3 sells for $64.95. The Phoenix E18R sells for $64.95 as well. And the Thrunite T1 sells for $39.95. Now, of course, all these prices are subject to change. These are just the current full MSRP prices as of the filming of this video. And of course, sometimes these flashlights do go on sale, so you can get them at a cheaper price. Now the Thrunite T1S here, this has a max output of 1500 lumens on the turbo mode, extremely bright. The Olight Baton 3 has a max output of 1200 lumens. All right. The Phoenix has a max output of 750 lumens. And the Thrunite T1 has a max output of 1212 lumens. So a little bit of a difference there as far as its output, but of course when we head outside and get some uh, demo shots of these at night, you're gonna see how they disperse that light. Uh, not all flashlights are created equal, and just because two flashlights may be very similar in their high output, how they project that light could be very different. You know, I know people who have personally had very bright flashlights but didn't like how they worked because they were super focused and they didn't have a, a nice wide area, and vice versa. People have complained because it was a wall of light, but very short at distance. They don't have the capability of having all that light project out. So depending on, you know, what your purpose is for a flashlight, whether you want all that light directed you know, right in the center, or if you want it to all kind of disperse out in a shorter distance, I mean, that, that's really why you'd pick one flashlight over another. In today's market, there's so many different flashlights that are, you know, plenty bright for most needs. Now, it is important to note that these are running on different uh, battery sources. The T1S here is running on an 18350 battery, as well as the other through night, the T1, also an 18350, compared to the uh, Olight Baton 3, and the Phoenix E18R are both running on 16340s. All right, so if we look at the size comparison next to each other, if I stand, actually, if I stand them up on the table here, all close, maybe you can see both the through nights are just a little bit taller. If I hold them together, move that pocket clip out of the way here. So I'm gonna give you a size reference. All right, so all the bottoms are about the same, so you can see the height difference, all right, and a little bit of the width. Okay, so both the Thrunite T1S as well as the T1. Very bright lights, a little bit chunkier, a little bit bigger. All right, and then it's also going to reflect quite literally with the reflectors. You'll see how these perform outside when we do the demos. So here's the business end of all these flashlights. So you can see the LEDs down in there and the reflectors, all right, and how they're shaped. Uh, real quick to go over the uh, LEDs from left to right. The Thrunite T1S is rocking a Cree XHP50 LED. Again, that's what's... Uh, allowing that 1500 lumens, ridiculously bright. Then the Olight Baton 3, it's a, a fan favorite among a lot of people out there. Um, this is unfortunately a question mark, just a high performance LED is all they, they mention, right? That's creating that 1200 lumens. Then here on the, uh, the Phoenix E18R, this one has a Cree uh, XPLHI. And then finally on the Thrunite T1, this is using a Luminous SST 40 LED. So real quick, I want to go over each flashlight, just give you a little bit more information about it. Uh, starting with the Thrunite T1S, you can see this does have a pocket clip, which is, of course, removable. If you don't want it, it just pops right off the body. All right, it is a two-way clip, so you can clip it one direction or you can clip it the other direction. All right, you can see there's a little uh, fins or cutouts on either side of the head. That's to disperse that heat when using it. it does have a magnet in the tail cap, okay, so it could stick to anything. Uh, anything metal, of course, that's magnetic. That's nice for uh, for hands-free uh, operation. But also with that uh, double-way clip or two-way clip, you can use this as kind of a headlamp if you clipped it to the bill of a baseball cap, which is a nice uh, feature. Then, of course, on the side here, we have the little charging port, all right, a cover. And uh, let's go ahead and show you how the light works. The long press, just like all the through nights out there, long press is going to be your moonlight mode, all right? It's the lowest mode with the longest runtime. All right, you can just click it once to turn it on. There is a power indicator in here. You can see blue, which means we're charged up just fine. Push and hold, it'll cycle through, low, medium, high. Any point, you can double click, go right to that turbo. All right, so we got the full 1500 lumens, and I could feel that heat on my hand here. It is quite bright and quite warm. 
All right, and then you can triple click for strobe. Of course, if you have any kind of problems with strobe, you might want to skip this part of the video. But triple click, and there is your strobe mode. And that's pretty much it. Very simple UI. Next up is the Olight Baton 3. All right, very small form factor. Also has that two-way clip, which is removable. All right, you can see there's a specific spot on here where it clips in as compared to the through night, which can be rotated around depending on your uh, preference of where you want that. Um, going back to this one real quick, I do kind of prefer that because what I do is I'll orientate my pocket clips on the opposite side of the, uh, the switch, all right, to activate the light. And the reason I do that is because if I have to find the light in the dark, it's very easy for me to, uh, to know where that button is, okay? Instead of, you know, searching around, I know it's on the opposite side as the, uh, the pocket clip. All right, just a quick little note there. But this is removable, of course. If you wanted to pop it off, you can certainly do so, just like that. All right, and it has that one specific position that it goes back on. All right, nice uh, grip texture, kind of grenade style on the uh, the body here. Uh, you can see the business end, all right, with that, you know, very um, classic blue. That's kind of Olight's theme, even though they have plenty of different colors these days. Blue is their original thing, black and blue. A right, little ring around the, uh, the button there as well. All right, this also has a power indicator. All right, so you can see in this case it is green, which is telling us that it's charged up just fine. Let me back out the camera here a little bit, and we'll talk about the uh, the UI. Before I do, you see there's uh, it's a magnetic charging system on the bottom. Instead of having a plug-in port, it's just magnetic USB, which is pretty simple. All right, so long press, and we have our moonlight mode. Same deal as the through night, uh, only you have a little bit of a higher output on the, the very low mode, uh, or firefly mode, but you don't have as much runtime. But some people just prefer that. Uh, and then same deal, you know, one click to turn on, you can push and hold to change between the uh, the different modes here. All right, double click is gonna be the turbo. You can see it kind of ramps that turbo as opposed to just switches to it. And triple click is gonna be the strobe. All right, also very simple UI. I've always been a huge fan of both Olight as well as through night uh, because they're just simple lights to use. And that is a good segue into the Phoenix. <laughs> now the Phoenix, they make really nice lights, but I'm just not a fan overall of their UI. Um, I think the quality is there, but it just sometimes gets a little more confusing and it's definitely very different than all the other flashlights that we use, at least for most people. So you can see there's also a pocket clip on this one here, okay? It is one direction. It's a unique style clip here. And if you rotate that to the side, you can see this is where the charging port is. It's, it's also magnetic. But that just sticks to the side there. All right. As we rotate this around, you can see our button on top. And kind of like the, the Olight, they got that black and, and blue thing going on. But Phoenix does a lot of copper. All right. Copper and uh, black, which looks nice. Um, but there's your button. I push it once, nothing happens. There is a, a power indicator. But with this, you have to push and hold to turn it on. Then once it's on, let me go ahead and back this out a little bit, then you can um, single press to switch the modes. All right, in this case, even though it was showing green, that turbo mode cuts down power. I want it to go higher, but it's automatically cutting down just because there's not enough juice in here. All right, um, if I do a long press and, and wait for it to shut off and keep pressing it, that's when we get our strobe. Our strobe has two different frequencies. It's a slower one and then a faster one, all right? Uh, and then it's a long press to, to shut it off. But if you keep pressing it, it'll go right to that strobe. So overall, the quality is good, but like I said, I don't have a, a preference for their UI or user interface. It's just, you know, not as common as a lot of the other major brands that are out there. But, you know, there's still plenty of fans of those lights. Then we have the Thrunite T1. All right, so come in a little bit closer here. I do really like this green coloration. Of course, this is also available in black. All right, same thing with the uh, two-way clip. All right, so you can use that uh, any way you want. Um, I do like the texturing on here as well. Same thing with the fins to dissipate the heat. There's a charging port. You know, similar in a lot of ways to the, uh, the T1S. Um, but when we turn this on, all right, same thing, long press for our uh, moonlight mode. All right, let me back out the camera. Um, you know, single press to turn it on. Again, we have our uh, power indicator within that, uh, that button. And uh, push and hold. But this, as you can see, how it's different is it's ramping. Now, I've always been a huge fan of the ramping function because it's really considered the infinite mode, right? So instead of having two or three or four presets, low, medium, medium, two, and high, or low, medium, high, uh, you just basically push and hold and you let go when it's the right amount of light. 
I really like it. I think it's kind of advanced. I, I like that feature. Uh, so that's really the major difference between, um, of course, the, the T1 and the T1S. Really comes down to preference. T1S is a, a newer light. There's more output. Um, you know, so some people might prefer that as well, but they, they're both the same price. So it really just kind of comes down to, you know, what your preference on that might be. Double click for the turbo mode, triple click for the strobe. So pretty simple stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get outside and show you guys some beam shots at night so you can see how these lights are projecting all of their lumens because not every light shines the same way. All right, so first up here is the Thrunite T1S, okay? There's turbo mode. Right now I'm a little further than I normally do just because I want to give you a little bit of a wider shot here. All right, so this is about 15 feet or so from the wall there. All right, let's go up. You can see that spill. Let's go all the way down. All right, left and right. And the point of me moving is so that you could see the spill and how that light surrounds the actual hot spot. So if I go back up here, you can kind of see how there's like a, a smooth gradient. Instead of just like a harsh line where it's just dark and then light, it fades away nice and simple, right? makes a more seamless transition when you're looking at things. So it's not just, you know, a spotlight or a circle of light. It just kind of fades out. All right, next up here is the Olight Baton 3. All right, there's turbo. Let's go ahead and go up. And same thing with this one. It kind of fades away to dark. All right, left and right. And all the way down. So, plenty of light. All right, let's check out the uh, Phoenix here. Let's turn on low, medium, high, turbo. All right. Move up. You can see this one also has a nice smoother transition. Not such a uh, harsh line, even though there's a distinctive hot spot here. All right, left and right. Yeah, very nice as well. Just a little bit harder to use. And then last up is the Thrunite T1. All right, which you can see gives plenty of area. Now, this is where it's a little bit different. If you've noticed uh, when I was showing all the heads of the lights, the other three flashlights had kind of a secondary um, lens in the center. All right, and that really concentrated that light. Whereas this one just have a uh, traditional reflector, so now we have more of a wall of light. There's not a specific hot spot in the middle. It is really just kind of, you know, bouncing every which way. All right, so we have the entire picture here. Let's go up. And this again has more of a direct line. You can see that where it's, you know, pretty much black and then we have light. So that's pretty much the difference with those different lenses. All right, down. We'll go ahead and go left and right. So quite different there and how this is projecting that light. So there you go. Hopefully this uh, video will help you decide which light might be best for you. I do think all four of these lights are fantastic options. I personally have a preference for the T1 and now of course the, the newer T1S. Um, I've always been a fan of the Baton 3 and again Phoenix in general, very good brand, just have to get used to that UI. Uh, but there's pros and cons to everything. So uh, again, hopefully this video is a little bit more helpful for you deciding which light might be best for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.